Alice and I work as a Senior Policy Advisor with National Disability Services, uh, the peak body for disability services. I suppose we're, we're seeing that uh, quite a few of our members are, have been really grappling with um, what ICT plans they should be uh, developing. Um, people are, some organisations have been investing quite a lot of money into this whole thing, but there seems to be a lack of uh, coordination or broader information and many services are um, report to us that they're really struggling to know with their limited funds where they should be investing in, in ICT, which is the new technology that's really going to make a difference um, and that's really going to lead to better outcomes, particularly in the context of um, the skills and abilities of workers, volunteers that are employed in the sector. Um, so I suppose we're hoping that this project will provide some of those useful resources and information, uh, networks of practice that will give a sort of practical um, practical useful things uh, to assist organisations on this journey. Our strategic plan from 2008 to 2011 included the development of an ICT strategy. Prior to that we had computers that weren't necessarily up to date, we had public internet terminals um, that weren't necessarily as secure as they could have been and we realised that we needed to be more efficient in the way that we gather data and then use that for our funding reports. So we actually had a deliberate strategy uh, that was approved by the board to um, have an ICT plan and therefore we were able to find some additional resources or put in some funding submissions to make that happen. I think as non-profits we have an obligation to be working most effectively and efficiently as we can um, using donors funds to the best of our ability and that also means using technology that's actually going to enhance the way we operate and deliver services to people who are vulnerable or experiencing disadvantage. So I see ICT as sort of one of our obligations and making sure that we're using donors funds to the best way we can and also to minimise risk of fraud or um, information technology um, issues uh, sometimes if you don't have the planning in place can uh, be quite problematic. Uh, it also means that from a business continuity point of view that we've got the right processes and systems to back up our data um, making sure that um, in any circumstances we can operate from any location around Australia. Look, there are a number of, of elements to ICT that I think um, are important for the CEO to be uh, aware of. Um, one of those is that um, we need to retain quality staff. So it's very important, particularly with the, um, with the opportunity to engage uh, Gen Y uh, staff. We need to ensure we have um, the most up-to-date, high-quality systems and technology is one of those. Um, it's also important that um, uh, we allow our staff to be mobile and to make use of mobile technology. Um, this also uh, uh, increases the efficiency of the organisation. Um, uh, but we have, a, I think, the capacity to have a, a much more engaged staff as a result of that. It's also important for us to engage with social media. Um, it's important for the CEO to uh, take the lead on that. So we've, um, we have a Facebook page, we have a Twitter account. Um, we want to be there uh, at the cutting edge with all of the latest technology um, and, and, and use uh, uh, low cost, high quality systems uh, to get our message out into the community. Well, I think it's, anything like this uh, needs to come from the top down and I'd be encouraging any CEOs, even if they're absolutely IT illiterate, to come along and, and come to some of the sessions that have been run through the program and just listen about what's possible. Bring the people with you that know about the IT but really make it a priority in your organisation because it does make a total difference to the way you operate.